In the last video when I was talking about closures, I told you how these uh, functions point to the single copy of variables, right? So they remember the copy of variables that were available during the function creation. So in this video, I'm going to explain what that means. What does a copy of a variable mean? It's it's not really duplicated. And uh, we'll also address the question, when does these variables actually get created? Now, let me clear this out, except for this one line, right? Let's take all this thing out. Now I have a var a equals 10. If I were to run the script, how many copies of a would get created? There would be just one, right? Now, if I were to run the script the second time, how many copies of a would get created? Again, it would be just one. But this would be a new copy of a now because I'm running this for the second time. The a that gets created for the second time is obviously different from the a that got created the first time I ran the script because every time I run the script, there is a new copy of a that gets created. Now, let me put my code back over here. Now, here let's look at var b equals 20. Now, b equals 20 is inside the function outer. So just like it worked for the global variable a, the outer function execution is what creates a new variable b. Okay, so every time I call outer, there is a new variable b that gets created and a value 20 is assigned to it. Okay, so I call outer the second time, there is a new variable b that gets created and assigned a value of 20. So the b that was created during the first execution of the outer function is different from the b that gets created in the second execution of the outer function. So the thing to remember is whatever variables you have in functions are actually created for each function execution. All right, so when I run the script and I say reload and run, there is one a that gets created and now I have a function declaration. And now when I execute the outer function here, this creates a new v, okay? And now when this function is being created, this function object is being created and assigned to inner, there is one copy of a and one copy of b, okay? So there's one instance. A is the first instance that got, that got created when line 1 executed. And B is the second instance when line 15 executed and then came here in line 4. Now you have a new copy of B. So when this function object is created, there is in memory one A and one B. Okay, and that those two variables contain the values 10 and 20 respectively. That's what I mean when I say that the function remembers where the copy of a and b is that it needs to refer to okay so when the function is created there is a function object that gets created remember we talked about this a function is actually an object in javascript so this actually creates an object and assigns that object to the variable inner it's assigning a reference here but you get the idea now in this object there is also another property which remembers the state of that scope it remembers the b that was created due to this line 15 and it also remembers the A that was created due to line one. So that gets preserved in this object that gets assigned to inner. And now when you return inner, you get it over here, this variable still has that value preserved. Now outer exits. This function does not exist anymore, right? The instance of the function, the instance of the variable B that was created doesn't exist anymore. Or does it? Because Think about garbage collection. The concept of garbage collection is, and, and this applies to a lot of other languages, works similarly in JavaScript as well. Once you have a variable or an object that does not have any references, that does not have any pointers, it gets cleared out by the garbage collector. But remember now that this is a function, it has a reference to this B, so it cannot be cleared out. So even though the function outer is already executed. So when this function outer was executed, it did all this stuff. It created B and ideally when the function execution completed, it should have cleared B out, right? It should have been uh, garbage collected, but it will not in this case because you have, a, you have an object here which holds a reference to the scope chain here, which indirectly holds a reference to B. So B is not going anywhere. This inner function object holds a reference to this A and this B that was created thanks to this execution, okay? Now, the thing to remember is when I execute outer a second time, there is a new B that gets created, okay? Now, let's say I have uh, var inner function two equals outer. Now, what's gonna happen? Outer executes once again. Now, it creates a new B, all right? Now, it comes to line six. It creates a new function object. And now, this function object has a reference to 
A and B because that's the whole scope chain at this point when that function object is being created. So it refers to A, which is still the same A because it's global, but it refers to the new B now, the new B that got created when the outer function was executed the second time. Okay, so this is the second function object. Now I have two function objects. The first function object refers to the same global A and the local B that was created during this execution. I have the second function object that still refers to the global A, but it now points to the second B that was created during this second function execution over here. Now, in order to prove this, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change the value of these variables from inner. Right now, inner is just printing the values and it will print 10 and 20 no matter how many times I execute this. But now that's not my goal. I want to change the variable and see how it affects it. Now, let's say I change this to A++ and B++. Okay, so I'm incrementing A and I'm printing the value of A. I'm incrementing B and I'm printing the value of B. Now, if I were to execute inner function 2, uh, there should be four lines that get printed on the console. Can you guess what those four lines are? Remember that when the first function executes, A has the value of 10 and B has the value of 20. So A++ is going to leave A as 11 and B++ is going to leave B as 21. Now it should print 11 and 21. Now I execute outer again. Now there's a new B that gets created. B is again 20. But now A is 11, so when A++ happens, A becomes 12. And B++, since it's a new copy of B, it is 21. So console.log of A and B should print 12 and 21. Let's clear this out and reload and run. There you go. The first execution prints 11 and 21. The second execution prints 12 and 21, which proves that there is a new B that is created for every execution of outer. So this function is referring to the first copy of B. This function is referring to the second copy of B. But both these functions are referring to the same copy of A. So this is what I mean when I say the copy of a variable. When the snapshot is created for a function, it's basically a snapshot of whatever variables were in the scope at the point of time when this function was created. That's what a function remembers and that's what closures mean.